Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you how to write an incident report for the security industry. Now, first, a little bit about me. I graduated from my state's top law enforcement academy, and when I graduated, I graduated on a dean's honor roll. So, let's talk about this incident report here. This incident report that you're going to be writing is going to be the most important report that you have written. It can go from various subjects to simple property damage, all the way up to an arrest or a shooting. And you're going to see here, this is going to be the face sheet. There's going to be one, two, or three of these. You might have different ones at your place, but this is kind of a basic one for the security industry. It's a little different in law enforcement. But to start out, you're going to have officer completing the report. You're obviously going to put your name there. And you're going to want to fill out this entire thing. You're going to put the date. Location, time, and the type of incident you're going to be reporting so the time is going to be military time and location use basic uh, like if it's a cross street or something like that say you're patrolling and you're uh, responding to an alarm you'd put the address or whatever whatever you want to put so we'll put And the type of incident. Uh, you'll put basically what it is unless someone's getting arrested and then you'd put say for instance uh, it's murder. You'd put your state's penal code for murder and then you'd put murder. But whatever you want to put time we'll put 2200. And then you might have your own company way of writing an incident report number. Um, a lot of places use the Julian calendar. So you do that. The type of incident we'll be reporting. We'll decide that later. And for subject one, two, three, and four, um, for subject it can be witness. The subject could be witness or it could be a suspect. And that all depends on what you're going to put there. And again, we'll decide that later. And then down here you'll put police notified, emergency services notified, or photographs taken. So, let's say for this, we'll put photographs taken. No emergency services. And there's no police notified. We'll just say that. And then for subject one... We'll say that this is the suspect. That you ran into. We'll put that. Then you try to get their date of birth, their driver's license number, a tactic that you can use if you're not going to arrest someone is you're going to hand over your driver's license, we're going to take your information. If you don't want to give that up, we're going to call the sheriff's department or we're going to call the police department. You will be arrested and we'll get the information anyways. Okay, so for our topic today, we're going to be talking about illegal shooting and um, don't worry about the incident report number. Your company will have their own way they want it documented. A lot of places like to use the Julian calendar, but your place may be different. Turn it over. Now, we're not going to be writing with this today because there's not going to be any evidence, but this method is what the police will use, and it would be at the top of here. 
you'd have item, quantity, and description just like this. Quantity and description will be next to each other and you'll give enough space for the item. And say there is evidence, uh, let's say someone dies or has a heart attack or whatever, and there's different pieces of evidence. You put the different items here, how many there are, and then the description of it. And then you'd start your your paragraph. For the purposes of today, I'm going to explain the two different narratives. There's standard notification report, which is basically a paragraph. It's just a paragraph probably about this big. Then you have a full-blown incident report where there's a lot of pieces going on. And it's going to be a three-paragraph report. Intro, body, conclusion. All right? The purpose of this first paragraph is to give all pertinent information that led up to the incident. It's not the incident itself. That's what the second and third paragraph is for. This is how you came upon it, how you discovered it, or who told you. And for the most part, the first sentence is going to be the same every time. With the exception of, you know, whatever vehicle you're in, or the date, or the day. But the first sentence is going to be the same. You're always going to put the day that you're working, the date, the hour that it happened, and your security vehicle, and where you are, okay? Because you're going to say, on Sunday, 1-1-17, at 2200 hours, in full armed uniform, and marked security vehicle, number 1234567, I was on patrol at the south side gate at ABC Construction. That last part, is showing where you're at. It's always going to be like that. Maybe you're not at the south side gate, maybe you're at the north side gate, but you always want to put where you're at. And it's just going to change a little bit. But the format of the first sentence is always going to be the same. It's going to be a little long, but you're going to have to separate it by commas. Now, just remember, whenever you write these things, it's always going to be in past tense, not future tense. Okay? You want to put in full armed uniform and mark security vehicle, whatever number it is, just in case a suspect tries to say there was no uniformed officers there. This shows you what you had on you. If he resists, you've got your armed uniform. If he says there's no uniformed officer, this is the license plate number that contradicts his statement. You're writing this to cover your butt in court, basically. Now, for how you receive the information, you're just going to write it simply, a small sentence, and as thorough and to the point as possible. You're going to say the time, the actual time that it occurred. You're going to look at the phone or your radio or whatever, or whatever your dispatcher says the time is. And you're going to say, at 22.05 hours, I received a call from dispatcher Kathy Smith in regards to a black suspicious vehicle in my area. That is how you came upon the information that led to the incident report. Okay, and then in the next paragraph, you're going to explain what happened. So after you finish your intro paragraph, you're going to write where you left off. Now, in this scenario, you just received a call about a black suspicious vehicle in the area, and you're going to start out, while on patrol, I searched for the black suspicious vehicle. At about 22.10 hours, I found the vehicle that matched the description. So after that, I really should have put the make and model and license plate number like I did here, but it really should be up here as well. Now, for the 22, at about 22.10 hours, that's an estimation, so unless you don't know the time, you're going to put about or around, something like that. Now, if you do know the exact time, say you get it in your phone, take a picture to, to prove that that was the exact time. Now, right here, I found a Hispanic male that's going to be the description of the male you saw walking around there. You're going to say Hispanic male or Hispanic female or Caucasian male or Caucasian female. Now, in this scenario, you're using a small amount of force and some backup. The backup, where you called in there, is basically going to be the conclusion of your body paragraph here. When your backup arrives, that's when you're going to start your final paragraph. And all this stuff is going to be in chronological order as it happened, even when you're discovering names. Even though you have the name on hand before you're writing the report, you're going to write the name of the suspect when you actually got his name. So it's probably going to be in the conclusion paragraph when you actually get his name. So in this scenario, this person 
just dropped his rifle and you're waiting behind the car with your firearm at the low ready. Now, you're going to want to explain all steps that you did, no matter how small the use of force you'd put that. So, in this scenario, I place my sidearm at the low ready position and you're behind the car as cover. Low ready is a term for the gun pointed at the ground and you're basically ready to point it if something happens. And you also order the suspect to drop his weapon and stand in front of the weapon to put him at a some form of disadvantage. So again, the third paragraph is going to start off when your backup arrives here. You're going to write who your backup is, what time he arrived, or about the time he arrives, what you did with the suspect and how you obtained his name, and basically how the incident ended. Okay? So after you've written the body, it's time to start on the conclusion paragraph and tell the story how you ended the incident in chronological order. And again, you're writing these sentences clearly and concisely, straight to the point, as short as possible, without extra detail. No run-on sentences, no nonsense, okay? So you started, or you ended, the second paragraph calling for Code 3 Backup. The conclusion paragraph starts when the backup arrives. So, Security Officer Lewis arrived at my position and provided backup, and then you're going to go through that, tell it in chronological order, and you're going to get to the point where Officer Lewis took control of a black Ruger 1022. While Officer Lewis was handling the weapon, I searched the suspect for any further weapons. You're going to want to do that for safety reasons, and you're going to tell... You're going to put that down in your incident report. It's a use of force, so to speak. Now, in regards to your backup, you do not have to write what your partner does. Your partner is responsible for himself. You are responsible for yourself. You write what you do, and he writes what he writes, and so forth. But you can write what you observe and what you do in chronological order, of course. So... Then you're going to write how you obtained the suspect's information. And you're going to do that in chronological order, even though you have the information at hand when writing the report. You're not going to write it until you actually get his name. So, after completing the search, I obtained the suspect's name, Jose Gonzalez. I asked Gonzalez why he had a weapon, and he said he was target practicing. Now, you can tell that I don't have quotations here. You don't always have to have quotations for when someone says something. If he rambles on, tells the story of him and his family, and all, a whole bunch of extra detail, you don't really have to put those in quotations. But it is a good idea to have a recording device to record what he says. You only really have to put quotations for very important things, but you can summarize what he says if it's not important enough. So in this case, he was just simply target practicing, didn't know, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. He's on private property. He's not supposed to be there. So you tell him to leave, and after he leaves, you notify your supervisor. So and not, he was told to leave and not return. Supervisor John Green was notified, and the incident photos were attached at 2237 hours. So you're going to want to take photographs of the incident, and you're going to write when they're actually attached so if they're attached to, like, a computer, you write it whenever it gets to the computer and so forth. Or if it's to a phone, it doesn't matter. But you want to write when it actually gets attached on there. And then the face sheet tells how many photos there are. And if there's, again, different uh, evidence, you put it in this little area here. All right. That's the end of it. And then that is the big kahuna that we wrote here. All right. Fairly simple, after you do it a couple times, you will get the hang of it, and it will be like second nature.